Lisa Foundation utilizes a comprehensive set of modeling tools for the simple creation of a variety of foundation elements. Model foundation elements such as grade beans, retaining walls, spread and combined footings, piles, and mat slabs. In this video, we will take a look at modeling and designing spread footings in Risa Foundation. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are usually modeling spread footings to support columns or point loads. There are two ways to enter or represent these columns or point loads. One is to use point loads in Risa Foundation standalone, and we'll see this later. The second is to use Risa's integration with our building model in Risa Floor or Risa 3D. So I've started a model with a steel frame here in Risa 3D with some loads applied. If we're looking at the loads, I have some dead loads and live loads, a variety of different wind loads applied to the structure. I've already run a batch solution, but before we direct her to Risa Foundation, you want to make sure you have those load case categories defined here in the load combinations. Because these load case categories are what we will be transferred over to the Risa Foundation model. Using the director button at the top right corner, our loading information is integrated to Risa Foundation. Our loads from Risa 3D are shown here. Remember, instead of using loads integrated from your Risa 3D model, we can also add point loads in Risa Foundation. See, I add some dead loads to nodes N11 through N14. First thing, before we put our spread footings in, let's just review the footing definitions that are on our data entry toolbar over here. Starting with my general tab, we have here where you can set the minimum and maximum steel reinforcement. Here also we can set the material we might want to use from the defaults list. If you want to add to that list of materials, there's a material spreadsheet you can open up here and you can add to this material spreadsheet. For the design rules, that's going to be some of our reinforcement information. We can tell the program here to do some equal bar spacing. We can also do group the design, so if one footing is going to be controlling, it will actually design all of the footings based off of that controlling design. The same if we're going to do any concrete bearing checks or if we're going to force this to have top reinforcement. Next in the geometry tab, this tells you the size of the footing. So the program is going to start at a size two foot length and width, and then it's going to grow that incrementally. And there's the increment here. So it's going to grow by half a foot until it meets the demand of the footing. We also have a minimum and maximum thickness, and then we also have an increment for these values as well. You can also force the program to do a square footing. We can go over to the pedestal tab. There is by default a pedestal on this one. If you do not want a pedestal, you can just make the height zero. Otherwise, you have a pedestal and you can change the size here. We'll leave it as a 12 by 12 and then with a 24 inch height for the pedestal. The footing can also be offset so we can use a boundary or eccentricity so it's not at the center of the pedestal or the footing. For example, if you had a property line boundary, this is where these tools become useful. We can also change soil properties here. Right now we have an overburden assumed on the top of that footing. We don't have any passive soil for sliding resistance here, but there is the friction coefficient and we can tell the program whether we're deciding that it's going to be gross or net bearing. Let's go to the design rules in our data entry spreadsheets. There's a footing tab here. So the program is currently using number three bars for the top and number four bars for the bottom. The pedestal here are going to be number three bars. In order to draw the footing, 
In the Home tab, choose the Spread Footing tool. Here in the Properties window, we have our footing definition, footing 1, that we just reviewed in our spreadsheet. So we're going to say Apply and just box or click on the nose. Now before I run the model, I can come into my Load Combination Spreadsheet to make sure we have all those Service and Strength Load Combination sets to design for my footings. Now run our solution and let's take a quick look at our results. If we go to our results spreadsheet and then the geometry, here we have our footing results with the length here and the width and also the thickness reported. So if we look at our steel reinforcement, it gives us a breakdown of what the steel areas are for this footing. We see all of our information for the code check as well. This is a really helpful tool, but what I really like to see is more information than just the spreadsheet. So let's look at a single footing to look at a detail report by clicking on the detail report icon and then selecting one of our footings. This gives us more of a breakdown of exactly what happened for the calculations. I can see the footing drawn in sketch with all of the reinforcement drawn out. Then we scroll to see the geometry is broken down with all of the loads that went into this footing. This gives us soil bearing check. If we are seeing any failures, they would be turned red. We can see this combination was what was controlling. We'll keep scrolling again and we can see that the footing checks are listed here. Our top bar check, shear check, and the pedestal is being designed. When we are seeing red values at these checks, the program is saying the footing size is inadequate. If we go to our global model settings, here we can choose optimize the footing. This optimize the footing will optimize the footing for overturning and sliding. So let's select this so that the program will actually size this a little larger. The solution is going to be cleared and I'm going to rerun the solution and now I can see a slightly larger footing here. I'm going to click on that footing again. We could also resize the footing from the detail report. There's a redesign button here at the top right corner. If I click this here now maybe we want to make this a smaller footing and I can enter in those values and change the thickness. We can then click OK and we get a footing that has been resolved. Our overturning and our sliding is still OK. So this is a good tool to check different footing sizes. At this point we've completed the design and analysis of our spread footings. For more information on other topics, please visit our website, risa.com.